seen their best ever season in the A-League has instead become their worst. The conclusion this week of the Salary Cap Saga confirms they won't be playing in the finals. Melbourne City will be. They've gained in some ways from the fallout, but they still want to show they'll be playing in the top six on merit. Yes, definitely a surreal atmosphere here at NIB Stadium as we wrap up round 26. It's the final home game of the season for the glory. How the fans react will be interesting. How the players react is hard to predict. Well, let's check the lineups now. We'll start with the glory. Kenny Lowe makes five changes after that season worst defeat against Sydney FC. Roston Griffiths is suspended. Marinkovic and Jamison are injured. Paljic and Harold drop to the bench. Income Ferreira, De Silva, Garcia, Kramer and Oxpra. De Silva, of course, making his farewell appearance for his hometown club before he moves to Italy. Mitch Oxpra, he makes his first appearance of the season. For Melbourne City, John Van Skip has also rung the changes. Q Yar Lenz is suspended. Safawan and Kennedy are rested. The former glory player Jack Clisby is recalled at left back. Paolo Retre returns on the right side of defence while David Williams gets his first start in seven weeks. On the bench for the glory, it's a first uh, appearance for Riley Woodcock, potentially Chris Harold and Pelliage involved last week against C and young Jacob Collard who was the captain of the club's youth team and does have Aboriginal descent. For Melbourne City, Ramsey Madocca, Stefan walked back after three months out with injury. Well, it's a dark mood here in Perth, but the skies are nice and sunny. The weather comfortable, 27 degrees at the moment. And a very slight degrees coming in off the ocean. Well, today is the chance for the glory to give their fans a reason to start believing again. Can the players find the spark to ignite the last home game of the season? We're about to find out. Kickoff between the glory and Melbourne City is next. Get a hold of this big fella. It's Sportsbet Super Soccer Special. Place a four or more leg multi across any EPL or A League matches. And if one leg fails, cash back up to 100 bucks. Sportsbet, download us. Honey, I'm hooked. Hooked on you. I'm all shook up, it only took a minute or two. Introducing the all-new turbocharged Sonata Premium. Get a hold of this big fella. It's Sportsbet Super Soccer Special. Place a four or more leg multi across any EPL or A-League matches. And if one leg fails, cash back up to 100 bucks. Sportsbet, download us. Welcome back to NIB Stadium. Good to see that smile back on the face of the glory skipper, Michael Thwaite. Thwaite, I should say, of course, has been a horrendous fortnight for Perth Glory. And uh, he's done it tougher than most, the captain of the home side. Patrick Kisnorbo about to lead out Melbourne City. And it's a penultimate round of the season. The final game, of course, of round 26. The great news for Melbourne City. They are confirmed to finish the season in fifth place after Brisbane Roar's defeat last night against Melbourne Victory. The glory, as Michael Thwaite said pre-game, it's all about pride in that shirt over the remaining two games of the season. Well, two draws between these two sides uh, earlier this season. A little draw last time out, a 1-1 draw back in round 12. Melbourne City arrive here on the back of a five-game unbeaten streak. That's been good enough to uh, see off the challenge of Brisbane Raw for a sixth in what turns out to be the final place in the finals, given the sanctions that have been imposed on Perth Glory. Glory, of course, have finished their season away to Western Sydney Wanderers next week. There's Kenny Lowe, the Glory coach who has appealed to the fans to get behind the team in this final home game. 
He's also hoping uh, he doesn't face a player exodus in the wake of that salary cap scandal. We'll have to wait and see on that score. John Van Skip will be thrilled the bets to have guided the team into the top six series. And if they do maintain this momentum, Melbourne City will provide more than nuisance value, you'd imagine, during the playoffs. Referee is Chris Beath, game number 105 in the A League this afternoon. Andy Keo, the Irishman, who's uh, delivered on the field for the glory, no doubt about it. It's what has occurred off the field involving Keo, among others, which has created uh, all those issues around the salary cap. focus will the glory be that's the question Danny De Silva well he should be focused because this will be his final appearance here at NIB Stadium before that much anticipated move to AS Roma the Italian club bought him a year ago and uh, loaned him back to the glory to get some experience so uh, on that score this season has turned out well for young Danny De Silva Jack Clisby back in Perth for the first time uh, since departing to join Melbourne City during the January break, 29 games for the glory before he moved to Melbourne. Back in the starting 11 at left back this afternoon. So it's Melbourne City who get the ball rolling here at NIB Stadium. Travis Dodd alongside me for the call. And uh, Travis, I know you've been asked this in the pre-game, but uh, I'll ask you again. How challenging is this game going to be for the glory mentally? It's going to be very difficult. I, I think they they found out last week and when they found out there was still hope of a, an appeal to go through but a week on the appeal has been heard and they definitely confirmed out of the final so I think it'll be a, a tough game for Glory today. Well, I guess on that score Travis uh, it's about the older players, the leaders, the likes of Flate and Julbich to guide these young guys around the park. Yeah it is, uh, they, they certainly have to, to be leaders today and, and stand up and be counted but we saw in the, the pre-game interview with Michael Thwaite, he did look deflated and, and defeated. So hopefully the smile uh, when he walked out onto the pitch is uh, a lot more positive sign for him. Here's Novillo taking on the Sylvanian uh, Dennis Kramer, who's playing at left back for the glory this afternoon. That position has been uh, a mortgage for Scotty Jamison this season. But he's been uh, rested or injured, whichever way you want to put it this afternoon. Strong challenge from Clisby, but the ball breaks nicely for De Silva. Risden working with Keo, the space in front of Keo. Osprey goes for goal. An early sight from the youngster, Mitch Oxborough. Born and raised in Perth, had to go to Newcastle Jets to get his uh, first taste of A-League action. Hey, what's that? Come on. So important for Perth Glory to, to get to a, off to a positive start, and they certainly have uh, getting the shot off there early for Oxborough. They need to get on the scoreboard, I think. Uh, we found last week that when they did go a goal down, they seemed deflated. In from Oxborough. Head of Ipartalu. When we talk about how tough it's been for the players, uh, Travis, what about for Kenny Lowe? Yeah, we saw uh, the, the emotional interview that he gave after the game last week and I'm sure it's impacted him uh, as well as the players uh, pretty hard. It affects Kenny as well because next season they need to build a squad that, that comes under the cap and that may mean losing players and, and Kenny having to rebuild a squad again and points on the board is what keeps your job and Kenny's got to redo all that again. Here's one of those players who might have been part of Kenny Lowe's plans, Jack Clisby, but for a circumstance, if you like. Away by Thwaite. Takes nicely for McLaren. He combines with Keo. It's a bit heavy, though, from the Irishman. Looking for Danny De Silva. Cleaned up nicely by Retray. 
Here's Risden. He's dispossessed by Moy. Novio. Germano. Corrin. Moy's taken up a wide position. He attacks uh, Risden. Gets the ball in the middle. Half cleared by Oxpra. He's now Villa. Uh, all played by young Oxpra. Kramer. Delightful diagonal ball to pick out McLaren. He's got Keo in the middle. And he didn't look up to any Jamie McLaren. I'm not sure what he was trying to go for there, but in the first instance, a fantastic ball from Kramer and that touch there to take it in his stride on his chest. Uh, it, was, it was a great touch there and did the right thing as a striker, I think, trying to get it across the face of goals, but unable to hit the target in that instance. You know, Andy Keogh had just checked the run to try and create some space there. Now, I'm not sure if Andy Keogh was in that position, he would have crossed it either, so... <laughs> Travis, we've uh, tried to get in the head, if you like, of the Glory players. What about the Melbourne City players? They are delighted to be in this top six on merit. By finishing fifth, that's the case. They're not in the top six because of the sanctions that the Glory have faced. So, for them, that's a real positive. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I think coming to Perth today and playing this game, uh, John Van Skip has got a difficult task in... Are the players going to... Are the Glory players going to be motivated? Here's a chance for Melbourne City. Baron Moy's been played in. It'll be a free kick. It'll be brought back for a free kick. The challenge on Corrin. Yeah, the, as I was saying there, Mike, uh, the players, the, the City players can't take this game for granted. They they can't come out today and expect that uh, uh, with the bad news that Perth Glory are going to lay down. So they still have to be up for the game and, and making sure that they, they're switched on and, and focused. They certainly want to go in with a win uh, into the final round. That's a challenge from Michael Flight, which is... Uh, Calls the free kick. And as every good defender does, pleading their innocence after. Oi, go, 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 go. So Navio is there. He has got a hammer in that right boot, Harry Navio. Will be Navio straight into the wall, gets a second bite of the cherry, and he forces Danny Bukovic down low to his right. A good second save there from uh, Vukovic. Uh, that, the first shot uh, looked like it was on target and did well to follow up with the, the left foot volley. And Vukovic, uh, I think he was quite comfortable in getting across and putting that around the post. In from Moy. Away by Navio again. Forced to go outside. Kramer. Well, he's strong, he's direct, he's quick, Harry Navio. Arrived uh, during the January transfer window from Clermont in France. Came to the youth ranks of his hometown club, Olympic Lyonnais. Did make a couple of first team appearances, uh, Harry Navio. Played for France at youth level as well, so not a bad CV. 23 years of age, trying to rebuild his career with his stint in Australia. It looks a very useful pickup. Here comes that long throw. Header away by Oxpra. Breaks nicely for De Silva. Good composure. Space here for Garcia. Kicks out De Silva. Tries to go outside Kisnorbo, but that's just strength from Patrick Kisnorbo. From here, that looked to be a fair tackle. That's the way the referee saw it. Still hasn't been cleared by Melbourne City. And now there's an offside flag to relieve the pressure. One thing that Perth will have uh, plenty of pace up front and with Danny De Silva there. Well, Not... I might uh, change my opinion on that replay. Okay. 
because Norba, I think he's a, uh, you know, he's a big boy. He's, I think he's just bullied him out of it there. Hit it from the Rio. Tell you what, there's good energy about this game. A lot of people wondered just how motivated these two teams would be. They're certainly producing a decent spectacle early on. Six wins to the glory over the journey. Four to Melbourne City. And uh, here at NIV, the glory of dominating. As I mentioned, Harry Navio did play for France at youth level, but uh, has since declared his international allegiance to Martinique. There you go. You're looking for the Atlas, aren't you, Travis? That's in the Caribbean. <laughs> In CONCACAF. Probably got beautiful beaches. Clisby wins the header. It's above Garcia. That's a uh, strong play from Moy. He releases Williams. They're queuing up here, Melbourne City. Here is Navio. He gets a second chance. Great save, Bukovic. The initial block from Oxburgh. Good desperation from Perth Glory, but Harry Navio very prominent early. Germano picks out Retro, continues his run. That was uh, very good defending from Josh Risden. That was a nightmare ball to deal with. Great bit of play there. They're queuing up there, the Melbourne City players. Uh, great desperation from, from two Glory players there to slide across and the V8. Doesn't matter, left foot, right foot. He, uh, he takes a strike on the, the right foot initially and then it bounces up again on his left foot and hits it well. And Vukovic with another great save uh, early on in the piece. It's another corner for Melbourne City to be taken by Aaron Moy. Goes short this time, gets it back from Corrin. This is rehearsed. And the uh, finish from Navia, not quite matching the impressive lead-up play. He's a ball magnet early on, isn't in the piece. Been all involved in everything with Melbourne City. Six shots in the first ten minutes from Harry Navio. He's a man in a hurry. Gilbert for Perth. Christian's turned it over cheaply. Good header from Kramer. Just think early on in the piece, uh, Glory have been under a bit of early pressure. They need to try and get, string a few passes together before they, they try and mount that attack. And just saw Risden give the ball away on the, the first or second pass. And it doesn't really give the, the players enough time to recover after the defensive work that they've had to do. Here is Risden, McLaren, Garcia, to McLaren again, but that's uh, well read by Kisnorbo. Glory have it back, Herrera's in there, De Silva, Keo flag is up, one count. Thumping header from Andy Keo, but I dare say he knew the flag was coming. from Josh Risden here. Keo just not finding himself on the, the right side of the defender there and good finish none, nonetheless. They've scored 11 goals from headers this season, Perth Glory. It's obviously a great strength of theirs. As 
Falafi deals with a uh, difficult back pass. Oxford. Kramer back to Oxford. Now to Silva. Here's Diogo Ferreira. McLaren. Another bold uh, cross there from Jamie McLaren. Decided to go first time rather than bring the ball down. Travis, one player you'd imagine who won't have any trouble getting up for this one is Danny De Silva, who knows it's his final game here in front of friends and family. Yeah, it's a, it's a big year for the for the young teenager and moving over to Italy after the, the end of this season, it's going to be a, a big adjustment for him, but one that I'm, I'm sure he's certainly uh, looking forward to. And I think another player that would be uh, up for today is the man on the ball, Jack Clisby, coming back to his former club and he can get a lot of game time in Perth and has been doing quite well over in, in Melbourne, so looking to put a solid shift in today. Retro leaves his free kick for Aaron Moy. Talked about uh, Perth Glory strength in the air. Melbourne City have scored 10 goals from headers this season, so uh, these are the two strongest teams in the league in terms of aerial threats. It's no wonder when you look across uh, that line of play to the top of the box, it's the land of the Giants in there. And it comes from Moy. Lovely delivery, superb save from Vukovic, who gets lucky with the rebound. Another, another brilliant save there from Vukovic. It's, they are certainly under fire at the moment, the glory, and just need to reset and get the boys focused and get them going again. Getting too many opportunities early on in the piece. Oxford. Support in front of him in Keo, but he comes inside. Risden, clever ball. Garcia's made a good run, and Richie Garcia strikes the base of the post. Well, as much as that is about the passing from Perth Glory, we have another look at that free kick from Moy and the save from Vukovic. What about the movement off the ball from Richie Garcia here? Yeah, he started that. He started that run. Well, he started that movement uh, at the beginning. Coming right inside, bringing Gamano and creating that space for Risden to get out there. And then on the second second attempt, has got him behind the defender. And Risden, when he gets in those positions, we've seen him hit a couple in the last couple of seasons from that range and thought he might have pulled the trigger, but he just slipped that one in behind. And Garcia did everything but hit the back of the net there. He did it all right. Yep, uh, Richie Garcia, for me, is uh, one of the most intelligent runners off the ball that we've seen in uh, Australian football. Very, very clever player, Richie Garcia. Williams goes down quickly, David Williams. Risden. Again, it's a cheap giveaway. Straight to Germano. Novillo just couldn't bring it under control. There's a real opening there for Harry Novillo. Good early ball from Jonathan Germano, the Argentine. Yeah, they're, they're certainly knocking on the door, Melbourne City. Another opportunity here and a set play for Melbourne City and have to be strong. Perth glory in the air defensively. Well, neither of these teams have conceded from corners this season. In it comes from Moy. Williams. Moy again. Diving in was Kramer. Now Williams back to Moy. They've managed to keep possession. 
Tyson from Melbourne City, lovely turn from Novio. And again gets rid of De Silva, slips in Moy! And he's blazed it wide, Aaron Moy. What superb lead-up play that was from Melbourne City. Probably uh, nine, ten passes involved. Great patience there from Melbourne City, not forcing it, just working the ball around, waiting for the opportunity to come. You saw Navio when he gets on the ball here. Danny De Silva, he gets, sells him one way, then sells him the other. More intelligent run inside off the ball there and tries to kick the leather off it. One in the air by Partaloo. Getting some real momentum now, Melbourne City. Here's Williams, back to Moy. As usual, pulling a lot of the strings for Melbourne City, Aaron Moy. Germano. Moy again. Drops it in nicely, Williams with the header. And Vukovic, well, probably a regulation save in the end for Danny Vukovic, but his positioning was perfect. Yeah, it was, uh, again, a, a great ball in from Aaron Moy there, and Dave Williams does, does enough to get it on target, but into the safe hands of Vukovic. And the danger, I think, for Melbourne City and John Van Skip here is that you so often see teams create so many opportunities and then the ball goes down the other end and, and they score a goal and, and get them against the run of play. So... For all the uh, attacking intent that they've shown uh, to get nothing of it, they really need to, to be aware at the back as well. Silva battling away, but it breaks for Melbourne City. Pressure though applied by Oxborough. Well, I've probably seen Aaron Moy go to another level this season. Uh, He's now talking about uh, returning to Europe. He's been linked to clubs in Belgium and Switzerland in the last week or so. Aaron Moy, of course, he's broken into that Socceroos uh, team as well. Went to England as a youngster. With Bolton Wanderers had a spell uh, in Scotland as well. Came back to Australia to rebuild his game. Didn't really work out at the Wanderers, but from where you sit, Travis Dodd, uh, he's got to be in that top four or five midfielders in the A-League at the moment, Aaron Moy. Yeah, without a doubt, and uh, it just shows you coming back to Australia in this league and, and getting game time under your, under your belt and in the legs, what it can do for your career. It's uh, certainly been a, a positive experience for Aaron Moy, and, and if indeed he does go back to Europe, it's thoroughly deserved, and I'm sure he'll go back a much better player. <laughs> Chapman, Retray. Tries it through the middle. Delightful ball to pick out Williams, who goes for goal, having uh, got the rebound, and then dives in on his opponent, David Williams. Another important save from Danny Vukovic. Great, great ball again. Great first touch there. Risen just not able to get a get a foot in there, get enough in, and I'm not sure Vukovic really knew much about that one, just uh, staying tall and, and making it difficult for for Williams to pass him, but I think he maybe took the wrong option there, going for the for the lace, maybe should have tried a bit of finesse and, and pass it in that. Well, he has got it in it, David Williams. He's uh, been around a long time now. Here's uh, Melbourne City's all-time leading goal scorer with 21 goals, and uh, this will be his uh, 88th appearance for the club. David Williams. No. One more appearance for Williams, and he equals uh, the club's uh, all-time leading appearance uh, holder, and that's Aziz Bayic. Here's Germano. Kramer, back to Vukovic. 
Five saves now from Danny Vukovic. Inside the first 24 minutes. He has been busy. Not so Tando Valapi. Can the glory find a way in behind? Not with passes like that from Keo. The numbers there just weren't they the numbers weren't there for Glory there. They only had three three against five there with the midfielders of Glory because they were so far deep defending. Taking them an eternity to get up and, and support and by that time the ball had been turned over. Corin skips away from Kramer. Germano, another clever ball to open up a channel here for Novio. Awkward for Rose but he's done well. Straight over the sideline there from Michael Flake. Clisby. Novio goes early. Who's going to deal with it? Well, eventually, Djulvic has to. Perth Glory just sitting so deep there, the, the midfielders especially, just not coming out to put any pressure on it. Maybe a symptom of the, the conditions out there. It is quite warm, and Perth don't want to expel too much energy early on in the piece, but they really need to start pushing up and putting pressure on that midfielders, those midfielders so they don't get the opportunity to, to look up and start spraying those balls wide like they have been doing. That'll be a Melbourne City throw, much to the uh, surprise of Andy Keogh. Here's Retray. Three wins and two draws in their last five games, Melbourne City. That's the sort of momentum you want to be taking into the final series. Too much on that for Novio. Often you see the the, the difficulty of uh, trying to break a team down like Perth Glory when they're sitting back so deep uh, in in a compact unit. Melbourne City aren't having that problem of uh, getting in behind them or, or going through the the defence of Perth Glory. It's just the the final touch and having the composure in front of goal to finish it off. Here's Kramer. The silver. Aaron Kramer again. Kicks it back from De Silva. Rides the challenge of Germana. That'll be a free kick for Perth. Risden. Breaks for Williams. Kicks out Navia, but he doesn't have a lot of support. Doesn't get the free kick there, Harry Navia. I'm on his side, to be honest. <laughs> Assistant referee was about a meter away as well. Yeah, he did look like he was in the, uh, the middle of the sandwich there. A bit unfortunate. So as it stands, of course, uh, Melbourne City will be playing at Adelaide United in that first week of the finals, and of course uh, that's their final match of the home and away season as well. Cooper Stadium uh, next weekend. So potentially two games uh, in the space of a week against the Reds for Melbourne City. There's the live table. United, uh, of course, missed their opportunity to finish top two with that defeat at Parramatta yesterday. Melbourne victory with uh, more than one hand, I'd expect, uh, Travis, on the Premier's plate after their win against Brisbane Raw. Um, and I guess... Uh, without being too premature, if that's how it works out, we should congratulate them. They've been uh, 
Very good to watch for most of this season, Melbourne victory. Williams. He goes for goal, and that's another save for Vukovic. Yeah, Kevin Musket has, has put together a great team there, and, and he's got the, the side playing really well. They are delightful to watch, and it is theirs to lose now. Uh, you can't really see him getting beaten next week, and it will be a, a well-deserved uh, Premier's plate. Chris Norbo collides with uh, Garcia. Ferreira picks out Kramer. Three at the top of the box for the glory. Whipped in by Kramer. Decent cross as well. Good delivery from Kramer there. Didn't want to, didn't make an effort to try and get to the byline. Put it in from a deep area, which is sometimes the better option. You don't have to get in behind the defenders there. And Jamie McLaren not able to get a, a purchase on it. Well, maybe that weathered the storm here, Perth, as we approach the half an hour mark. Jilvic picks out De Silva. Kramer again. Novio. Now well, he's an exciting player to watch, isn't he, Harry Novio? Even in that position, he's done to, to win the throw for his team there. He didn't have a lot of options to go forward or even to go back and was just able to do enough to, to keep possession of the ball. Chapman. And Julbich. Pumped forward by Ferreira. Let's break eventually for Andy Keogh. Now Oxborough. They've worked it from right to left, Turk, but uh, clever intercept from Melbourne City. It was Paolo Retro who continues his run forward. Now Moy. It's a bit too hot to handle that one though for probably Corrin. Andy, Andy, Andy. Travis, uh, we've talked about the mindset of these first scoring players. I guess if you're looking for one individual in particular who might be feeling the pressure more than most, it, it could be Andy Keogh, given that he's been at the centre of uh, most of the allegations. Yeah, look, um... I, I don't think that the, the players are to blame for this situation. Um, you know, player, they come to a club, they, they negotiate a, a contract in good faith. Uh, it's not a player's responsibility to be concerned with a salary cap, which he may not have been aware of coming from a, uh, a league where salary caps don't exist. So uh, hopefully, hopefully he's not too down uh, about the situation. Williams played in by Corrin. Williams still going. Close down by Julbic. Moyes in there for Melbourne City. Here's Navio, and the snapshot from the Frenchman goes wide. Well, Melbourne City could well have had one or two goals by now, but their finishing continues to let them down. Yeah, again, Dave Williams in a, in a great position there. Moyes just not able to get a touch on there, Navio, yet again. His eighth shot for the to the half. It's uh, it's an incredible uh, first 32 minutes of football for an individual to have that many uh, attempts on goal and, and not be able to hit the back of the net. Has scored twice this season, Harry Navio. Eight attempts on goal, just three on target.
to Silva. Wriggles away from Germano. Kramer. Another delightful diagonal from the Slovenian Dennis Kramer. Uh, unlucky there for, for Richard Garcia. Did well to, to get the ball down and get the ball out of his feet. Didn't try and take the player on. Just got himself half a yard of space and just wasn't able to wrap his boot around the ball to put it in the box for a, an effective opportunity for the glory there. Flick on from Novillo. Williams. Good strength from Ferreira. Okay, he's been out muscled by Novillo. The shot was on target. And that is a smart save from Danny Vukovic. Melbourne City have it back. That should be a free kick for Williams. And at the end, it goes the other way. They quickly by the glory. Given away, though, by Danny De Silva under no real pressure. The real difference between the two sides at the moment is the ability to hold on to the ball. Melbourne City are doing it at will, just playing that ball across the middle of the park, being able to still go forward. And Perth Glory, when they're getting the ball, it's, it's rushed and, and it's given away within the first one or two passes. It's good strength from Clisby. Ferreira does well to, to dispossess uh, Navia there and just tries to turn back inside and got himself into a bit of trouble and dispossessed and another great save from Vukovic keeping this, the side into the in the game in the first half certainly. Oxford, lovely weight on the pass to pick out Garcia. He cuts it back, it breaks for McLaren. Heavy first touch though from Jamie McLaren. Perhaps had a bit too much time. They are getting space, the glory, particularly down that right hand side of the field. Williams, no flag. David Williams, big chance, and he's butchered it. Deary, deary me. Well, David Williams should have put Melbourne City ahead. I think uh, Dennis Kramer's basically stopped there. He's uh, looks like he's, he's on site there and plenty of opportunity. Just bobbles around his feet, gets stuck in his feet, and couldn't get a clean shot away on it in the end. Well, David Williams is uh, capable of scoring some uh, fantastic goals, but uh, sometimes the misses are equally spectacular. It's one; those are the ones that yeah, they you need to be making the most of them ones. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of those opportunities one on one with a goalkeeper like that, and you you need to be hitting the back of the net there. The shot is decent and the save is decent as well from Tando Velafi. It was uh, Josh Risden. This is uh, Risden range, if you like. He doesn't uh, muck around with tappings. Doesn't score too many, but a couple that he's scored have been pretty spectacular, Josh Risden. He uh, put his boot around that perfectly again on target and Velafi equal to the task on that occasion. De Silva's corner. Away by Clisby. Stake by Garcia. Now Melbourne City stream forward. Well, he has been uh, Glory's best in his first half, hasn't he, Danny Vukovic? Some of the saves, you'd have to say, have been 
pretty straightforward, but uh, some of them have been uh, pretty impressive. And he's a goalkeeper, perhaps in career best form at the moment, Danny Vukovic. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's definitely one of those players that the club need to, to sit down with and, and make sure that if it's rumoured to be true that the players can terminate their contracts, that they need to make sure that they can keep Danny Vukovic. Well, Ross and Griffiths has made it clear he's uh, departing at the end of the season. He's trying to uh, find a club in Europe. So he's uh, definitely out the door, Roston Griffiths, who follows him as anyone's guest. There is uh, very strong mail that Anthony Golick is actually committed to the glory next season, the uh, Western Sydney Wanderers uh, defender. So there will be some movement in the transfer market for the glory in the wake of that uh, salary cap drama, but not a lot really because... Uh, Right now, once the players are allowed to leave in terms of breaching contracts, uh, most of them have recommitted to the club for next season and beyond. Here's Oxburgh, who may well be very important to the future of the glory. 20-year-old Mitch Oxburgh. Jilvich, Risden. Garcia wants it early, but again, it's... Uh, Misdirected. Gemana. Tartalu. Chapman. Here we go. Retray. Again, no real pressure being applied from, from Glory. They're happy to sit back and, and absorb it and, and let Melbourne City come on to them and try and get them on the counter. But it's not been an effective tactic so far because Melbourne City have been able to get in behind the defence and, and through the middle of the park on a number of occasions. Lisby's giving it away. Now Kramer. Dennis Kramer, of course, one of two Slovenians on the pitch. That's uh, a rarity. Robert Corrin, the other. He was uh, captain of Slovenia for a number of years, Robbie Corrin. Dennis Kramer, uncapped uh, by his national team to this point. He's on loan from uh, Hetafi, the Spanish club. Till the end of the season. This will break for Moy. They switched off Perth. Moy goes early looking for Williams, but Thwaite was there in front. Put back in towards Navio. Well, that's a good strong header from Kramer. The crowd urging Danny De Silva forward. He gets some movement from McLaren. Delightful weight on the pass. Good run from McLaren. Needs some composure. And there's plenty of it. Jamie McLaren. A sucker punch as far as Melbourne City are concerned. Perth Glory take the lead. Having absorbed enormous pressure. The finishing touch applied by Jamie McLaren. Jamie. Tip to Dodsey. Jamie McLaren, one of the players that, that does work his socks off for 90 minutes when he's on the park. And delightful ball there from Danny De Silva. And McLaren just has a touch and, and shows something that the Melbourne City players haven't been able to show for the first 42 minutes. And that's the composure in front of goals. He looked up, composed himself, then took the shot and was able to hit the back of the net. And yes, I did call it, Mike, so many times, uh, so many opportunities, Melbourne City. Now they find themselves behind and having to chase the game. And, Although the game is for nothing in terms of position on the table, Melbourne City will want to go in with confidence uh, get, heading into the final games of the, the season and then into the final series. Sixth goal of the season for Jamie McLaren, who uh, is trying to shake that tag of a super sub. Wants to be a 90-minute player. Has the talent, has the potential. No question of that. Andy, Andy. 
and he's uh, really thrived, Jamie McLaren, since Kenny Lowe switched his formation around and pushed him up front alongside Andy Keogh in a partnership. Probably proving that he's uh, much more suited to play centrally than out wide, perhaps, Jamie McLaren. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's got the support out there as well. He can, he can make the runs off of Andy Keogh and they can work in tandem together. I know he has said in the past, Jamie McLaren, that working with Andy Keogh at training and, and being able to learn off him there is, uh, has helped his game immensely and it's, it's certainly showing out there today. Here's De Silva. And that's uh, strong from Retro. He goes into the notebook. And I'm quite sure whether that warrants the card, but that's the way Chris Beach saw it. It was a, it was a touch late, I'll... Uh, Content to give the for, for Chris there, um, give the yellow card. Haven't you changed your tune since you stopped playing? <laughs> <laughs> well, put it this way if that was against me, I'd want the player booked. Yep. But if I was making the foul, there was nothing. You'd be blown up. Standard. Here's Kramer. has just been booked surely not deary deary me well Paolo retro sent off melbourne city down to 10 men two yellow cards in the space of perhaps 90 seconds and i'm not sure about that i wasn't convinced about the first yellow i'm going to go out on the line and say that chris beef got the second one wrong uh, there's not much he's done sure he's, he's blocked the run there of uh kramer but Kramer's basically run into him there. There's, there's not a lot he can do there, so... Well, there's the first one. And, uh, look, you think that's a yellow, Travis, but I'm more inclined to think just a free kick. But this is 90 seconds later. And, yes, he's blocked the run, but yellow card... And the referee would know he's just booked him. There's no way for me that that's a yellow card. There's, there's no way. I'm sorry, Chris Beef, but... Uh, I think that's an overreaction. And I think uh, Melbourne City have every right to feel aggrieved. But there you go. The visitors down a man as we head towards half time. Down a goal as well. And this is a Melbourne City side who uh, probably up to the last five minutes have dominated this match. How quickly your fortunes can change. Oxbra with a free kick for the glory. The header by Kisnorbo. There is the halftime whistle from Chris B. What a dramatic end to that first half of football. Perth Glory trying to shake off the shadow of this salary cap scandal. Have got themselves uh, the only goal of the game so far. It came from Jamie McLaren. Melbourne City had so many opportunities. Danny Vukovic producing a string of important saves. They couldn't convert any of their chances. And now they're down a man after the sending off of Paolo Retre. Half time here at NIB Stadium, Perth Glory 1, Melbourne City 0. Let's head down to Zappa. Thanks, Mike. Danny De Silva with me. Gee, that changed pretty quickly, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, that, that's, that's football for you. You know, one pass and we're in behind. And um, yeah, it was a great finish by Jamie. And a great through ball by you, too. You saw the run? Yeah, yeah, I know. Before the game, we were talking about it. I knew he made those runs, and I knew I could play those balls to him. So, yeah, I saw the run nice and early, and um, yeah, I was just glad that it was executed well. Seems odd to ask, how can you improve? Because for 40 minutes of that first half, you were outplayed. How do you think you can improve? Yeah, look, um, I think we just maybe need to slow down a bit, you know, take an extra touch if we need. You know, I think sometimes we're rushing it in transition, but uh, yeah, I think we just need to take a deep breath and uh, regather ourselves for half time. Thanks, Danny. Cheers. Thanks, man. All right, uh, when you have a look at the record between these two sides, Perth Glory has won their last four here at NIB. We'll be back with more after this break. Place a four or more league multi across any EPL or A-League matches. And if one league fails, cash back up to 100 bucks. Sports bet. Download us. This halftime break brought to you by the Flame Grill Whopper. The burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. Welcome back to NIB Stadium where Perth Glory are in pole position to end a dreadful week on a high leading one goal to nil against Melbourne City. Melbourne City side, of course, with 10 men. 
After that contentious red card to Paolo Retre just before half time, the visitors have made a change in response. Jack Clisby is off in. Ramsey is on as left back for Melbourne City. But uh, after absorbing all that pressure for much of that first half, uh, what a change in fortune it's been for Perth Glory. And uh, Travis Dodd again alongside me for the second half. Uh, it's theirs to lose from here, I would imagine, Perth Glory. Uh, it certainly is. Um, Vukovic did really well that first half. Uh, kept the side in the game and, and they were able to get him with the sucker punch. And now they've got the one-man advantage, but Melbourne, Melbourne City has still got quality out there and they're still able to play good football, or potentially. As we've seen here, we have with Novio. Well, all the chances are falling to the Frenchman. It was a well-worked combination of Villa, Williams and Moy involved. But he hasn't got his shooting boots on this afternoon, has he, Harry Novio? He certainly does. And the opportunities that he's had, uh, just snatching that one across the body there and, and putting it wide. But for the amount of opportunities that he has had this afternoon, nine attempts on goal already, ten attempts. I reckon even with that uh, rate, Dodger, you would have got a goal by now. Oh, God. What was your strike rate? One in every... Uh, it depends. If you're talking about soccer is level, it was one, one every two games. Fantastic. <laughs> Does have a touch of Travis Dodd, Harry Neville, the way he plays as well. Strong, direct, quick. Here come Perth. McLaren, the goal scorer, to soft that ball inside for Garcia. Safe to say, Mike, that he's a much better player than I was. No, don't uh, put yourself down. Mike. <laughs> Although uh, I did hear you say three game five grand finals, five defeats. It uh, was a curse. It was a curse. That's a scar and a half. That one. Here's Garcia. It's an up and under. Valapi's under pressure. Too much pressure. Yeah. Tricky goes to the Melbourne City keeper. Of course, I uh, had uh, three or four years here. Tanner Valapi never really established himself as number one goalkeeper. Moy. Williams back to Moy. Novio writes two challenges, goes for a goal, what a strike Novio, spectacular save from Vukovic, boy that was moving. Much better, much much better strike there from Novio, allowed to get, get inside there, gets the ball out in front of his feet and puts his boot through it, what a strike, Vukovic again to the rescue for Perth Glory. This is a personal duel between the goalkeeper and the Melbourne City striker. In from Moy, played by Vukovic. If it continues like this, he, he has to get one, surely, in the VO. Ken Vukovic. Here's Keo. McLaren. Oxborough. McLaren. Showed too much of it to Kiz Norbo. Now Moy. Corrin. Fartalu dwelled on the ball too long. That's good enthusiasm from McLaren. That's a poor final ball for Andy Keo. Kramer, down he goes. A lot of contact according to the referee. Challenge came from Jonathan Germano. Here is Novillo, up against Risden. It's a good foot race. There's that strength again from Novillo, who's then clipped by Richie Garcia. 
And uh, is he going to uh, escape a card here, Garcia? If that's deliberate, he'll be lucky to get away with it. Looks like he is. It's the experience there from Richie Garcia there. Well, I do think the VO gave something very similar to Josh Risden uh, to win that ball initially. Here's that challenge, and uh, that looks deliberate. And, uh... Yep. Yeah, he certainly uh, stuck that leg out intentionally, just made it look like it was all in stride, though. So I guess from Richie Garcia's point of view, he's disguised it well enough. That's what experience does. It's Moy over the dead ball for Melbourne City. He goes for goal. Fantastic Aaron Moy. Superb free kick. He's got that in his locker. And we've seen it again here in Perth. 1-1. One, one. What an absolute superb strike was that was there. So Richie Garcia initially the foul and able to get it up and over and just inside the post and on that occasion Vukovic just wasn't a chance to to keep that one out and for all the saves that he's made he just couldn't get near that one well it was always going to take something special to beat Danny Vukovic in this mood and that's what that was from Aaron Moy the set please uh, masterclass from the Melbourne City midfielder <laughs> So the visitors now back uh, on level terms, and you'd probably argue no more than they deserve. Keo, De Silva. Last touch coming off. Robbie Corrin, who uh, disagrees. Played short by Keo to De Silva. Oxpra. Corrin goes long. Now flight. Striding forward, Michael Flight gets past Williams, sets it up for Keo, miss kick. Breaks kindly though, the shot, the save from Balafi. It was Dino Julbich of all people. Yeah, the two, two big centre halves there, both getting involved for glory there, and Michael Thwaite starting the runoff there and getting the ball across to Dino Julbich eventually. He shows good feet to come inside and get it in out, and a great fingertip save there from Valapi to keep it out there. What is he doing up there, Dino Gilbert? Who knows, but uh, he's earned his team a corner. And it comes from De Silva. Flicked onto the near post. Garcia is there as well. He's kept it in. Planted into the advertising boards uh, for his troubles, Richie Garcia. Ferreira. Now Oxbra. Back to Ferreira. We're showing uh, commendable spirit here, Melbourne City, despite the one man disadvantage. Sometimes that's enough to to spur the team into to playing better. I, I'm not sure what it is about going down a man and having that disadvantage, but certainly not showing any ill effects uh, Melbourne City at the moment, being down a man. And Perth Glory, for the moment, was still happy to sit back and invite that pressure on from Melbourne City and not push up and, and try and apply that, that pressure higher in the pitch. Ferreira. Oh, 
is Keogh. Risden. It's uh, over hit the cross from Josh Risden. And Jamie McLaren, of course, uh, contracted for another season, but uh, Travis, plenty of uh, mail around that he might be heading back to his hometown of uh, Melbourne next season. The victory are supposedly interested. We'll get that sort of speculation in the wake of this salary cap uh, situation, won't we? Certainly is, and, and there'll be, a, I think, a, a number of players with the season that they've had that clubs would love to get. Jamie McLaren has had a great impact off the bench this season and showing today why he should be in the starting 11 on a on a regular basis getting into great positions and getting himself on the goal sheet as well of course he's also a key member of the olympic squad he's trying to qualify for rio that has uh, been scoring freely as well for the Oli roos uh, most notably during that uh, recent qualifying tournament in taiwan so he's uh, in a purple patch in front of goal at the moment, Jamie McLaren. Another player who went overseas early. In this case, the Blackburn Rovers and uh, found first team opportunities hard to come by. So returned to Australia to get some first team football. It's worked out pretty well for him, particularly this season. Here's Connor Chapman. Dragan Paljic, uh, last minute stretching from the winger. That's the one for Perth Glory. I uh, say winger, but he has been playing more centrally in his last few appearances, Dragan Paljic. And the word is he'll be replacing Diego Ferreira, so uh, he will be playing uh, more in the middle, Paljic, we assume. Here is Ferreira. Keogh. Oxford. And uh, Ramsey under no pressure. Lumps it towards Novillo. The knockdown was aimed towards Moy. Didn't work out that way. Glory having a player down behind play now. And it's Mitch Oxborough. Didn't see exactly what happened there, but may just be holding his groin there. Looks like it. Maybe after that uh, long diagonal that he's just attempted, felt something as he's followed through there. Here is that uh, ball from Oxborough, and you can see him just collapse straight to the ground. So you're right, it's uh, definitely a soft tissue problem, and it does look to be uh, in the groin uh, as well. He's uh, had his injury problems, Mitch Oxborough. He'll be uh, reluctant to go off, really. It's his first appearance of the season. I think the physios have got a lot of answering to do as well. They need to come up with much clearer signals. We've got the thumbs up there now from the physio, but some of the signals that we get from physios, you just don't know what's going on, whether they're staying on, they're coming off, wait five, what's going on? Well, if we can't work it out, uh, can Kenny Lowe figure it out? He's still, look, he's got his hands in the air, so he doesn't know either. Travis, he's got Doug and Taljic there, who... Uh, Ferreira. Oxford's now back out there. And uh, here he is immediately uh, on the ball. 
change delay. Well, Kenny Lowe makes sure there is uh, no lingering problem involving Mitch Oxborough. Half an hour remaining here at NIV Stadium. 1-1 one, one between Melbourne City and Perth Glory. Here's a chance for Melbourne City to add to their goals tally, but it was good covering from Dino Julbich. Harry Navillo just kicks the upright in frustration. Dave Williams did really well there to outmuscle Ferreira off the ball and, and get, himself, get himself in a position to put that cross in, which he delivered really well. Navillo had the touch, but Dino Julbich there you know, doing enough to cover and not letting get the shot off on goal. In from Moy. Torrin puts it back into the corridor of uncertainty, if you like. The glory deal with it well enough. Here's Keo. Garcia drives it wide. Collected by Kramer. I have to say, Travis, that Dennis Kramer's uh, slotted in pretty well at left back this afternoon. He has. He's, uh, he's been able to... Defensively, he's been quite solid, and, and even going forward, he's put in some really good deliveries there, so... A good alternative option there for Kenny Lowe. Should Jamison be down on form or be out for injury? And Williams has lost a boot. I thought it was David Williams, but in fact it's uh, Navillo's boot. The boot that uh, can't find the back of the net this afternoon. This could be the answer for him, coming off and retying it. <laughs> so 11 shots now for Harry Navillo. No goals as yet. Here's Chris Norbo. Chips it forward. Patrick Chris Norbo. And a half volley from David Williams. Uh, the grandstand. Here's that change finally for the glory. Paliach comes on. And it will be Diogo Ferreira who makes way. Palic coming on will be looking to give more of a, an attacking influence in the middle of the park. Especially given that Melbourne City are down to 10 men. Kenny will be really want to be chasing this game and going for the three points. It's way back to Vukovic. Clears under pressure from Novio, only as far as Partalu, but it does break kindly for Perth. McLaren, released by Keo. The Silver's in there making a nuisance of himself. Now Garcia gets to the byline, but he's not quite quick enough, Richie Garcia. Keo was screaming for it at the back post. Well, Kenny Lowe. Be pretty pleased, uh, you would think, with this scoreline, given the circumstances he's had to deal with during the week. Of course, uh, that loss last week against Sydney FC was their worst of the season, Perth Glory. So there's a little bit of pride at stake uh, in responding to that, which they've uh, done, at least on the scoreboard, Travis, if not necessarily with the performance. That Perth Glory have been a team all year that have shown heart. They, they never, they've never given up. They, they've come from behind on a number of occasions. Here's De Silva. The laugh is spilled out. What a finish from McLaren. Superb reaction from Jamie McLaren. He has threaded the eye of a needle there. And the glory back in front. Great through ball there for Danny De Silva to get in behind. That, that great touch there as well. Galapi just not able to hold on to it and 
great instinct from Jamie McLaren there to be following that up as a good striker should be and somehow managed to slide that in off the post. Well, no reaction time for Jamie McLaren, but what an unerring eye he had for goal. His second of the afternoon. And that's the reason the glory are in front. How Navia would love to have that, that strike rate of three shots and two goals of Jamie McLaren tonight. Well, I was saying that Kenny Lowe would be pretty happy with the 1 1 score, and it'll be a lot happier now. Their final home game of the season, Perth Glory. You can only ponder what might have been. With the win here, they'd be on uh, 47 points. Well, they will be on 47 points, but of course, we know that they're going to lose most of them. And that be uh, still in the race. That Premier's plate, perhaps. So that's the way Kenny Lowe will have to uh, look at all this and his players as well. That's just kicked away by Eric Tartalou into the grandstand. And, uh, Chris Beef pulls out that yellow card. In fact, it was Connor Chapman, I should say, not part of Luke. Didn't really need to punt that one into the stands, did he, Connor Chapman? No, one of those unnecessary yellow cards, especially for a defender now, putting himself in a precarious position now for the last 25 minutes. Of course, he's only uh, just returning from that ban for... Uh, and handling a referee, Connor Chapman, so discipline uh, is something he needs to uh, focus on. The glory have a free kick. Driven in towards Keo. Oxborough. Blocked by Novio. Kramer, he's got it in. The header from Jilvic just clears the crossbar. And he uh, pours the service as he should. Dino Jilvic, wonderful cross. Great delivery there yet again from Kramer. Dino Jilvic is certainly one that wants to find himself on the, the score sheet at the end of the game. Pegging back that uh, stat slowly, the glory goal attempts. You know, Jewelwich doing his bit. It's really, really poor from Patrick Kisnorbo. Keo has it for the glory. And uh, look at the numbers streaming forward all of a sudden for the home side. They have got uh, a spring in their step now, Perth Glory. Oxborough, Keo, Resden, good early ball, looking for McLaren, who of course is on a hat-trick. He's dispossessed by Chapman, here's Ramsey. Well, John Van Schip uh, wants a bit more energy on the field, he'll get that from Massimo Docker. And uh, off goes another time. Peripheral, hasn't he? No one said he's marquee man, Robbie Corrin. <laughs> Flick off from Partler, he's not Villa. Yeah. 
theatrically goes to ground as uh, he wrestles with Dino Djilvic. Maybe Djilvic uh, did stand on his foot. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. There's certainly no uh, malice at all here from Djilvic. Yep. He did uh, stand on his foot, Travis, but... Uh, not a lot. Not a lot of it. Good to see he's back on his feet and up and going again. Chapman. Again, puts it into the grand set. Connor Chapman. Won their last four home games against Melbourne City for glory, and they are well on track to make it five here. Of course, uh, irrespective of their last two results in the home of the way season, Melbourne City will finish fifth. But we've been talking that first half about the importance of having momentum going into the finals, and uh, the loss here it might stall that momentum just a little bit for the. Uh, visiting team here yeah you certainly want to go in fully confident of the team the way that they're playing being able to, to get results I think the performance from Melbourne City today has been quite good uh, given the referee I think made the, the wrong decision in, in sending uh, retro off in the first half and had he stayed on the park could have been a different story but we'll never know but Still want to get the performances right leading into the finals. There's no doubt about that. Driven towards goal by Dino Gilbert. Well, I tell you what, he's on a mission. He's belted that from about 35 metres, Dino Gilbert. Or maybe 30, but. Probably not one of the, the regular free kick takers, I wouldn't imagine. Turnover from the Docker. McLaren uh, was straight into an offside position. The ball didn't come quick enough from Keogh. A Melbourne City a team here you can see uh, worrying the top four in the finals. I think on their day, the performance that they put in today, being able to move the ball around and, and keep possession and, and put teams under pressure, yes, but in front of goals, if they can't take those opportunities and make it count on the scoreboard, then they, they won't be able to affect a lot of teams. So as long as they can get that killer instinct in front of goals, then yes, they can certainly be a threat. <laughs> Madoka. Shift the ball quickly, that's Madoka. There's a, another change, a final change from John French Skip. Stefan Mork back uh, in terms of the A League, at least after three months' uh, absence. He replaces Eric Partaloo. So had a couple of games in uh, Melbourne City's NTL side, Stefan Mork. Slot straight into that uh, defensive midfield role. Another player who'll bring energy into the centre of the park for Melbourne City. Of course, they're playing a man down in this second half, of course. Here is Paliuch for Perth. De Silva back to Paliuch. He's in behind, drives it across goal. Ramsey takes his time and then turns it over and has to be careful with the challenge. Keo. What do you make of the body language of Andy Kerr? I know, uh, and I'm not in any way suggesting in this salary cap drama that he's got any fault attached to him, but uh, he would have known about this before it surfaced, what was probably coming, and his form, you'd have to say, in the last couple of months has dipped a bit, do you think? Behind the scenes, uh, some of this has affected Andy Kerr? 
Oh, look, uh, I don't think it's just been the, the salary cap stuff. They, they had the dramas in, in Adelaide as well, um, off the field uh, after a night out. So I think there's been a, a potentially a couple of things that, that may have contributed to uh, the form at the moment. He's, uh, he's been around long enough, he's big enough, he's bad enough, and he's certainly ugly enough to, <laughs> to, to work through those kind of issues. So, look, as a, as a good striker does, they, they keep working and keep putting themselves in, in opportunities to try and score and, and get themselves out of the rut. Yeah, the goals have definitely dried up for uh, Andy Kerr over the last couple of months, that is for sure. Here's that shove from Connor Chapman. Pretty blatant. He's already been booked, of course. The Docker. Chapman's head up. Well, enjoy a win here, Kenny Lowe. I reckon we might see that uh, victory jig that we haven't seen for a few weeks. If they end up with the three points. <laughs> will be a, a bittersweet moment for, for Kenny, I imagine, knowing the potential of the, the squad and, and where they could have been this season. He has backed himself there, Tano Velafi, and uh, managed to uh, sweep that one away. More problems here for Oxford. Oxford, yep, looks like it's Oxford again, so uh been shot for the second time. Yep. Looks like that's Kenny's seen enough now and he's gonna go to the bench. Hey, what's that coming? He goes off, 77 minutes in, Chris Harold comes on, the silver over the corner. Tough shift to get through today, uh, Mitch Oxbury did well in the middle of the park there, under the pump there in the first half, but did well to get through it. Garcia, Keo. Lovely turn from Keo. But, uh, watched all the way by Massimo Madoka. He's stuck to his man like glue. Another corner for Perth. Madoka yeah, does really well. He's, it's like a little test in there. I remember playing against him. Those little legs having having him buzz around you. What? The silver swings it in. It's come off the head of Moy. Cleared by Gimano. <laughs> Ramsey. Moy. Gimano. Madoka. Well, have they got the energy? Have they got the drive? Melbourne City. Pull this one out of the fire. Williams. Looking for Mork. Route one from Vukovic. Ricochets off the head of McLaren. Germano involved. Now Moy. Mork makes a forward run, but... Uh, Boy doesn't pick him out. He's turned over possession. 
So De Silva has it from turn. Kia. Chapman. Another turnover from Moy. The Docker. Here's Germano. Novio skips away from Garcia. Breaks here for Stefan Mork. Patient here, Melbourne City. Germano delivers. Hit it from Julbich. Moy tries to create room for the shot, but is closed down by Dragan Paljic. This is better for Melbourne City, much better. Shifting the glory around the park. Kids Norbo, Novio. Madoka. Now Germano, he goes deep, Williams is there, and in the end it's a comfortable catch for Danny Vukovic. Well, they didn't really get a shot on target there, Melbourne City, but uh, possession play much better, Travis. Yeah, they worked the ball around really well, even down to 10 men, and just don't know why there's the, the reluctance from Perth Glory not to, to try and put the pressure on, on Melbourne City and, and win the ball back straight away. A bit pedantic there, Chris Beef, with the uh, positioning of that free kick. That allows the glory to get back behind the ball. Yeah, Goes early, dealt with by Kramer. Now Harold. Here's Madoka. I think it's a concern here for Kenny Lowe is that uh, the Glory haven't finished them off. They are down a man. They've been down a man since uh, just before half time, Melbourne City, but still within striking distance. Yeah, they certainly are. And Melbourne City is are showing great composure out there, keeping the ball moving it, making Perth Glory work. Garcia. That's poor from Garcia, and it looks as though he might have uh, done a hammy or a calf or something in playing that pass. He is uh, in big trouble here, Richie Garcia. It might be cramp. Hopefully, that's all it is. He has gone to ground. We've already lost uh, Mitch Oxford to a soft tissue problem. The glory does look as though it's only cramp. That's good news. You saw the dedication there from Garcia, though, even though he was cramping up to try and still track back. <laughs> even on one leg. Still yep. wants to try and do the job. Hopscotch. <laughs> it's taken an eternity, hasn't it, for Richie Garcia to get back to his hometown. That very uh, 
good career he's had, most of it in England, of course, played in the Premier League with Hull City, Colchester City, played for West Ham in uh, the youth system, won the uh, FA Youth Cup, in fact, uh, I think with the Hammers, Richie Garcia, spells with Sydney FC, and of course, uh, today's opponents, Melbourne City. So, uh, I think it's been about 15 or 16 years it's taken them to get back here to Perth. He's certainly gone the long way about it. Another wholehearted effort from Dino Julbich. We get that every single week. The uh, one player who would be telling the young blokes, don't let all this drama get to you, uh, is Dino Julbich. In fact, uh, you wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of him in that dressing room, would you? Not in the dressing room, more on the training track. He's, uh, or in the gym, perhaps. He's certainly uh, straight down the line. Blah, blah, blah. Harold, chance here for McLaren. Hat trick for Jamie McLaren. A day to remember for the Perth Glory striker who applauds the service he got from Chris Harold, put on a plate for Jamie McLaren. Now that is a wonderful end to a dreadful week. It certainly is. Chris Harold there with the, just slides it straight across the six-yard box and Jamie McLaren just opening the body up, taking on the left foot there and putting it inside the far post and thoroughly deserved uh, goal for and hat-trick for Jamie McLaren who has worked his socks off today. Yep, he will remember this day for a long time, Jamie McLaren. Hat-trick in the A-League in front of uh, his home fans. There's the glory maker, their final adjustment. Tired, uh, tiring. Richie Garcia replaced by Riley Woodcock who gets his first appearance of the season. So Jamie McLaren becomes the fifth Perth Glory player to get a hat-trick. Select company. And that uh, you would imagine has uh, sorted the result out for Perth Glory as the video again is denied by Danny Vukovic. Well done by Rizda. Got his shoulders in. Well, you did say, Travis, uh, the character's been uh, prominent for the glory all season. Their fighting qualities, their refusal to uh, give up. And I guess we've seen it again this afternoon. I mean, I know they've had the one man advantage for most of the second half, but you look back at that opening half an hour, all the pressure they were under. They were under the pump massively and something that Kenny Kenny Lowe has been able to still it instill into the players this year is just that that work ethic. They they're just not stopping for the for the full 90 plus minutes and, and it's getting him results week after week. So what does John Beck skip making this? For him it's gotta be the one that got away. Uh, the opportunities that they had in the in the, the first half to not be able to 
apply the pressure on the scoreboard and make an impact there. And look, I think the performance overall hasn't been too bad. The, I think the, the scoreline doesn't, doesn't give a fair reflection of how Melbourne City's played today. Novillo. How different things would have been if Harry Novillo had his scoring boots on. Germano trying to pick out Williams. Julbich is in the way. Woodcock with the header. Here's Talic. Just gets away with that one. Dennis Kramer. As we uh, head into the 92nd minute. Just 90 seconds or so remaining. Here is Wisdom. De Silva. Is there enough time for one more for Perth? De Silva. See what was going on through his head there. Just wanted to come inside and try and kill that one in the top corner. Not coming off, I'm sure, how he uh, pictured it to go. No smile as yet from Kenny Lowe, but he's got this one in the bag. are here for Melbourne City is that they're a tour away form does continue the one just three of 12 on the road this season of course though they will be away in the final series so that's something they need to sort out and sort out quickly so they are to go past uh, week one in the playoffs Melbourne City Certainly got a bit of work to do in front of goals uh, in the training track. Chapman, Germano. He's already had one look at the watch, Chris Beef. A whistle in the mouth. And there is full time. And it's an afternoon to remember for Jamie McLaren. A hat-trick from the Perth Glory striker. Headlines. An impressive result given the week that I've had Perth Glory. Perhaps some light at the end of the tunnel. Melbourne City came here 